Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to see you, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we begin our service today as we normally do by asking you to take a moment of silent meditation. Just ask God to come within our hearts and minds that we might worship him today in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask the Reverend Trace again if she would lead us in our morning song. We invite you to sing along with her. Page 80, St. Luke 17, 11 through 19. 
As we find this, let us stand, please. And this is a story or an account that is very familiar with us. It is entitled, Jesus Heals Ten Men of Leprosy. Jesus Heals Ten Men of Leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. going to ask Diane if you would come lead us in our pastoral prayer. We ask that you pray with her as she comes. Thank you. 
something.
leaves here better than they came. Yes, Lord. Hope this simple prayer touches someone's heart. All that agree, say amen. 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 of your $100 words. 
Mr. Kipling folded the money, looked at the man, smiled, put it in his pocket, and said, thanks. <laughs> there are certain things that we try to teach our children as they're growing up. And we usually focus on their actions and their words. In other words, we try to teach them good manners. We teach our children to say yes sir and no sir and yes ma'am and no ma'am. We teach them to say please, we teach them to say thank you. Because giving thanks is always a good thing. In fact, Psalm 106, the first verse, reminds us that, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. This passage of scripture that I read to you earlier is about giving thanks. In this passage, Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem. He is on the border, it says, between Samaria and Galilee. It is there that he is greeted by ten men who have leprosy. Now, Luke points out that Jesus meets them on the border because this encounter takes place in a region that is full of hostility. The re because the relationship between the Samaritans and the Jews at the time of Jesus was filled with conflict and sometimes even violence. But it had not always been so. Centuries before the conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans, they were all one people. What changed them is what occurred during the exile when they were wandering in the desert. During the exile, some of the Jews settled in the towns and villages that they came across. The towns and villages that they came across were often Gentile in origin. Some of these Jews married these Gentiles, and that's when things began to change. They turned on each other. They turned on each other regarding their beliefs about the scripture, their beliefs about worship, their beliefs about what it means to be holy. But we can, at the center of all of this, their differences can be summed up with one word, racism, a word that is still alive and well even today. In any case, despite the potential danger surrounding the, the clash between the, the Samaritans and the Galileans, despite the danger, despite asking them if, if they were loyal to Yahweh or not, despite their heritage, despite their intentions, even despite their races, their race, Jesus heals all ten of these men. Paul best sums it up by saying that when we follow Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in Christ, exactly as it should be. That's what Paul says. Now, Paul comes after this uh, particular, this particular uh, occurrence. So it wasn't Paul's words that Jesus was listening to. Jesus was listening to God's word. And these 10 men, they come to Jesus with a common misfortune. This terrible disease called leprosy had broken down even their racial barriers. You see, in their tragedy, they had forgotten that they were Jews and Samaritans and realized that they were just men with a great need. 
and the need which they shared in common was greater than their differences. Some would say that this is actually the cure for racism, to recognize that some of us, that none of us, excuse me, that none of us are greater or better than anyone else, and that all of us share a common need. It has been noticed in times of floods or great disaster that people come together. We forget about our differences and we strive to overcome the disaster that is before us. It has even been noticed that wild animals do the same thing. That wild animals in plains that are flooded will gather in a place of safety without harming one another. Predator and prey, sharing a place of safety until the danger has passed. These men forgot about their illness, they forgot about who they were racially or bloodline wise. All they knew is that they shared a common need and they were able to band together and help one another. Now the lepers stood at a distance as Jesus was approaching. And they did this because they were, were required to do so. You see, when a leper would enter a city, or when people would come near him, he was required to wear a bell around his neck, almost like a necklace. And at the time of someone approaching him, he would ring the bell and cry out, unclean so that others would be sure to keep their distance. No one could get within 150 feet of a leper because the disease was just that serious. And no one meant exactly that, no one. Not even their families could have any contact the only ones that can get close to a leper is another leper. So they were far away from Jesus when they saw him walking down the road. That is why they had to raise their voices in order to be heard. They shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. Their common need that brought them together despite their bloodlines has also been the common thing that they find that they use as a solution for their cure. They knew, all ten of them, they knew that Jesus was the answer. The doctors didn't know how to treat them. The doctors wouldn't even come near them. The law said stay away from them. But they saw Jesus coming down the road and they knew that an end to their sorrow had come. They saw Jesus coming and they knew that if anybody could help, Jesus could. Now why would they think that? Because they had seen Jesus help others. They knew that whenever Jesus comes, anybody's way. Things have to change. They knew that whenever Jesus saw a need, that things would change. They've seen the blind come to Jesus and walk away seeing. They've seen the sick come to Jesus and walk away healed. They even saw the dead rise. They knew that there was nothing too hard for God. And so they cry out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And the good thing about the story is that Jesus hears their cries and he looks their way. Notice that he doesn't do anything spectacular. He doesn't, he doesn't even say a prayer over them. He doesn't really say much of anything to them. He just tells them, go see the priest. And they obeyed, they turned, and they began walking towards Jerusalem. Whenever Jesus encounters those in need, he always asks them to do something. 
We remember when the man came to Jesus who was blind and Jesus tells him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he goes and he washes his eyes in the water and he's able to see. Jesus always requires some action by the one who is asking to be healed. He says to these lepers, go to the priest. And while they're going, they were cleansed. Jesus never touched them. He never said, be healed. All he said was, go see the priest. And as they're walking, one of them sees that he is healed. He sees that his skin is now known. And that there were no more sores on his body. And he returns, and with a loud voice, he gives God the glory. Now Luke points out at that point that this man was a Samaritan. One who had a problem with Jews. And one who was despised by the Jews. Yet this is the man that comes back and is thankful. He falls at the feet of Jesus and says, thank you. Notice that Jesus takes note of what this man has done. He takes note of it and he also begins to ask a question. He said, weren't there ten? Where are the nine? Where are the others? In other words? It's hard to imagine, but the scripture tells us that it, that it did. You see, these men didn't think it important to come back and say thank you. Maybe they got caught up in the excitement that now that I'm healed, I can go see my mother, I can go see my children, I can go be with my friends. But you know the sad thing about this is, is that we are the same way today. Now, I'm not talking about you all that are here and you're those of you that are listening. But there are people who find it more important to do something else than to take a moment or two just to give God thanks. There are those that, that have more important things to do than to come to church just for a few minutes. There are those who think that, that, that everything else is important. Sometimes the church is at the bottom of the list. And y'all know y'all can say amen, as you know it's true. But this man, this one man, who wasn't even a Jew, comes back and he says, thank you. There's a direct connection between gratitude and salvation. But Jesus says to this man, who comes back and falls at his knees and says, thank you. He said, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Has saved you. Jesus heals him. But his gratitude is what saves him. You see, my friends, when, when, when God has touched us, when God has been good to us, we can't help but say thank you. Especially when he has brought us through something, something that was, was that, 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 that had us down, something that, that was tragic, something that we could not see our way out of. When God brings us out, we can't help but say thank you. This man had lived a life of misery and pain. This man had lived a life of isolation. This man had been in a condition where nobody wanted anything to do with him, not even his own family, but now he is able to go wherever he wants to go. He's able to do whatever he wants to do, and he takes time to say thank you. Jesus said, get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. And get up and go is found all throughout Luke and even the book of Acts. Acts. Get up and go signifies that something miraculous is about to occur. 
We remember that when the angel came to Mary and told her that, that she was carrying the Son of God, Mary gets up and goes, says Luke, to Elizabeth. The prodigal son, when, when after wallowing in the pig pen for all of that time, uh, wallowing in his misery after squandering his father's money, he says to himself, I will get up and go. God tells Paul, when Paul is, is blind, uh, after seeing Jesus and being struck on the road, God says to him, get up and go to Damascus. The command to get up and go comes with a promise to us all. It comes, to, it comes as a promise, just as Jesus said to the Samaritan, get up and go, your faith has made you well. You see, the good news of God saying, get up and go to us, is that, that he's telling us to go, get up and go to those who are in need. Get up and go and show mercy to those who, who, who need the mercy given to them. Get up and go to those who are lying on beds of affliction. Get up and go to those who need to hear a good word. Get up and go. It's what God is telling us this morning. If he has been good to you, if he has blessed you, then we must do as this Samaritan did. We must adhere to the voice of Jesus that is telling us to get up and to go where the voice of God needs to be heard. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen, Tracy. Amen. Amen. Amen, God. Make us all want to just give thanks to God for what he's done. Amen. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. Brought me through many dangers, toils, and snakes. Brought me through sickness and pain. He has been good. And I say thank you, Lord, as the song goes. Thank you for what you've done. Amen. 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 Yes, he has. Yes, he has. <laughs> Got Mr. Wine going over there now. <laughs> Amen. Our uh, next Sunday, remember, uh, that will be our tea Sunday. We'll be celebrating our 86th uh, annual tea. We had 86, right, Ms. Brown? Yeah. Okay, 86. Uh, we're asking, of course, as we always do, uh, to pay what you can, I think. We, we can't get straight on what it was. And maybe some of you remember what, what the asking was. I thought it was a dollar for every year. Uh, I was told this morning it was $50, and then somebody else said, no, it was 25 So I don't know what it is. I'll tell you what, just give what you can. How about that? Amen? Just give what you can. Uh, our tea has always been for our benevolences, and uh, we just about got those paid off for this year, but we still need your help, and you know that next year we're going to have uh, benevolences again. So uh, what we don't use, we put in uh, reserve. And Miss Diane has envelopes. If you need your tea envelopes, just see her uh, uh, for those. Are there any other announcements? Do we have any other announcements? Okay. Yes, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And if you want your pink ribbon to wear, uh, see Miss Ms. Brown, she has she has them for you. Uh, Ms. Richardine has them too. Okay. All right. Any other announcements? If not, let us stand and be dismissed. Got some going home music for us, Ms. Tracy. Oh, okay. The Queen's birthday is today? Well, okay. She's with us today. And it's also Jonathan's birthday today. That's right, the night. Yeah, Jonathan. I should have known that. As my frat brother, I should have known that. Yeah. All right. You all ready? Go ahead, Ms. Tracy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thankfulness for what he has done for us. Amen. Amen.